Hello, my people, and welcome to this channel where we give now Bunge updates on within the Apple for Biafran territory. As the Islamic State, the intact begin, Prime Minister the talk say in one plan to buy bomber helicopter for BLA because this week we pass BLA don't send to judgment many of the terrorist soldiers. We don't come our land, and if na year one news we Musa do he talk say the way that they buy. The zoo army is too much for Biafra territory. I'll make now hear this update from Prime Minister. Please join me to welcome the Ambassador of Peace, Biafra Prime Minister, His Excellency, Agunia Chamber, Oberto Bie Mazi Simon Ember. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. The Honorable Chief of Staff, of the Biafra Republic government in exile and the de facto government in homeland. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the press. Good evening, our cabinet members, ministers, heads of department, friends of Biafrans, ladies and gentlemen of the press. I welcome every one of you this evening. Good evening, um, our international attorney, Dr. Levy, I welcome you to this very first ever uh, Biafra Republic of Maintain Exile uh, press uh, briefing uh, to inform Biafrans on the milestone of this government within a very short period of time, especially on this Banju court development. My fellow Biafrans, since I was elected the Prime Minister of the Biafra Republic of Mention Exile. I made sure that we fulfill the promise to the Biafra people by following the template and liberating Biafra using multi dimensional approach. The multi dimensional approach, the political approach, diplomatic approach, and of course, or uh, in self-defense and armed struggle approach. The reason for that is that while we are following the international uh, most acceptable way of liberating people that are being subjugated or enslaved by the oppressors, we as well, and at the same time, decided to protect and defend ourselves against a known terrorist state called Nigeria. So my fellow Biafrans, as in we continue to pursue the freedom of Biafra people using every mechanism necessary, of course, there is a need for us to also um, use the judicial approach. And today we are in Banju court with the Nigeria terrorist state. The Nigeria terrorist state, many people may not understand why we will continue to address Nigeria as a terrorist state. A country where terrorists are, uh, you know, reintegrated within six months of so-called surrender. Knowing fully well that you cannot reintegrate terrorists within six months. In fact, terrorist, terrorism is something that is very ideological. It is not something you are going to uh, solve by uh, putting people in one place you call a camp and giving them food and teaching them how to live a life and make food or how to run and tra do trainings. And then after six months, you will say that, that, that you have now de-radicalize them. There is no point in de-radicalizing a terrorist that is very ideological. And today we have seen the effect of those whom they claim to have de-radicalized and reintegrated into the society, including recruiting them into military, police, air force, navy, and all that. We've seen the havocs, the menace they cause in our land, and when they are recruited, 
they deploy them to Biafra territory and they will begin to burn villages, houses, instead of protecting the people. So it's over to you. Thank you so much, Honorable Minister Sani Aparawa. Greetings, everyone. His Excellency Simon Edel, Dr. Jonathan Levy, Brigade Cabinet members, de facto government administrators, county and regional directors, stakeholders, media personnel present. Dear friends and friends of dear friends, welcome to the first ever press conference by the Biafra government in relation to the African Commission on Human and People's Rights. My name is Dr. Ngozi Robreza, the Chief of Staff to the Biafra Prime Minister. Welcome everyone. The 2023 counter reports on human rights practices in Nigeria by the Bureau of Democracy, Human Rights and Labor, inducted Nigerian government in so many ways of human rights abuse, violations, incarcerations, and killings. Closely related to the search for peace and reduction of killings in Africa is the International Crisis Group Report on African Union. Among the eight major priorities in 2024 by African Union, is the Biafran Ambazonia Alliance, signed in Finland in 2023 during the Biafra referendum conference under the leadership of His Excellency Simon Eber. This conference heralded the Biafra Charter and other important documents have paved way for Biafra declaration later this year. Today, Biafrans through their prime minister and our council has continued to bring to world attention the violations, oppression, suppression, and inhumane treatment that Biafrans go through under the Nigerian government. From 1967 to 1970, when Biafra was a full-fledged country to date, the young country Biafra was thwarted by the Nigerian government with over 3 million Biafrans killed and many children starved to death by the Nigerian government, the policy that placed embargo on food, especially proteins, into Biafra land. Same problems that caused the civil war of 1967 to 1970 still ex exist today in a more deadly format with the reintegration of terrorists into the Nigerian state, Islamization of Nigeria, and use of two laws in one country creating a very dangerous diversity. A major violation in several human rights reports is the unlawful kidnap, torture, rendition, and continued incarceration of the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Mazi Namdekanu, by the Nigerian government. Several court rulings in Nigeria, including a United Nations committee set up to look into Namdekanu's case, have acquitted discharged him and sought reimbursement to him from the Nigerian government. But the government have refused to release Namdekano or obey any of these court orders, both local and international. A country that has no respect for the rule of law is gone. Nigerian government believed that if it holds Namdekano long enough, Biafra agitation and freedom will be abandoned and not realized. Knowing that their mission has failed in that aspect, they turn their attention to the only true disciple son of Mazin Namdekano, His Excellency Simon Eber, the Prime Minister of Biafra government in exile. Under Simon Eber's leadership of millions of Biafrans, and in a recent ex Twitter poll conducted, 98% of Biafrans voted to exit Nigeria. This fact is undisputable. It is the wish of the people, and it should be respected for peace, equity, justice, and in line with the laws governing self-determination. Biafrans met the criteria for those laws of which Nigeria was a member state and signed those treaties. The issue of the Lekki massacre, a mass burial of innocent victims 
who participated in the march was confirmed by the Human Rights Report of 2023. Nigeria government denied killing and burying those innocent children. The truth will always stand the test of time. Other violations by the Nigerian government include the incarceration, torture of their friends in different cells across Nigeria, whose only crime was to seek for their own country and to exit a country where known terrorists are reintegrated into the security apparatus, including military and police. The recent killings in Enugu by Fulani terrorists supported and shielded by the Nigerian military and government is documented. Hundreds of killings in different parts of Nigeria, including the Ehamufu killings, the Obibo killings, the Mbo killings, the Aba killing, recently the Okuama Niger Delta killings, the Olu killings, Boronu, Jos, Zafara, Kaduna, Benue, Abuja, including the federal capital territory of Nigerian killings. Persistent and continuous kidnappings of indigenous citizens school children, undergraduates, women and children with no help from the government, headed by President Tinubu or the army chief under Christopher Musa or the senators headed by Godswell Ababio. Little help, comment on national TVs, no safeguard of lives and properties by the Nigerian government. Biafra exit is a life and death matter. These and many more are the reasons why Biafra seek to exit Nigeria. Biafrans have maintained the Monday seat at home consistently for over two years, courtesy of Biafrans and the Prime Minister, His Excellency Simon Ever. This act in itself is a form of referendum and coupled with our established government in exile and de facto homeland administrators, a uh, defined geographical area with its people, culture, and origin well defined. The 40 United States of Biafra, each with its governors, whom we call the administrators, deputies, and secretaries. Citizens in these 40 states are loyal to these administrators and to the Biafra government in exile and have been massively participating in the referendum voting, which is in its second stage. Over 20 million Biafrans that rejected the past election in Nigeria, which was documented on Nigeria INEC website, many of them have voted for the Biafra referendum, and more are still voting daily as we speak. Biafrans are the point where we are facing extinction and begging to leave from the Nigerian government and sponsored Fulani terrorists who kill, maim, and occupy indigenous Nigerians' home without any consequences from the Tinubu government. During the recent killings in Plateau State, one of the city legislators noted that the practice of these terrorists is to attack communities who, out of fear, run away from their homes, then only for the same home to be occupied by foreigners in a few months' time. This is happening across the whole country. The act of depopulate and occupy is what the Nigerian government and their terrorist loyalists use to eliminate thousands of indigenous Nigerians and their friends every year. How could a government that reintegrates non-terrorists as an approved policy be asking world leaders to help fight terrorists? This game is ended. These killings, burning of homes and businesses targeted at their friends by the Nigerian government using both the military, police, and reintegrated terrorists can no longer be tolerated. The continuous attack of Biafra businesses in different parts of the country, such as in Lagos, Kaduna, Abuja, Kano, and the economic sabotage of Biafrans on a daily basis by the Nigerian Tinubu government can no longer be tolerated or swept under the carpet. Remember the 20 pounds given to all Biafrans at the end of the civil war, regardless of how much any Biafran had in the bank. Such wickedness against Biafran persists to date, and we cannot accept it anymore. Biafrans have risen up to defend themselves from these constant killings, oppression, suppression, and economic destruction. For many years, we've marched on the streets, we've carried placards to express our wish 
We've consulted publicly and privately with stakeholders. We've reached out to foreign bodies such as the United Nations for help. In all this, what do we get? More reprisals, more killings of unarmed citizens, marginalization, hatred, subjugation, intimidation, and above all, continued violation of our rights, land and property by the Nigerian government, their allies and their supporters. This is against all international laws and treaty they signed with other countries. Nigerian government believes in the use of the barrel of the gun to silence those who do not wish to be part of their terrorist state and agenda. Even innocent women and children who were not involved or against what they do uh, end up being murdered. So this shows that whether you defend yourself or not, Nigerian government will kill you using the reintegrated terrorists whose agenda is to depopulate and conquer. The government agenda approved and signed by Nigerian government and legislators and reintegrate these terrorists in different formats, including the one called Ruga, of which they used to spread across the whole Nigeria. The full only tactics of divide and conquer is a strong tool which they've employed over the years in many African regions, including Biafra land. They financially and politically corrupt the governors, legislators, local leaders, townships, and citizens to continue their heinous crime. These inner parts in the divide and conquer game are the insiders in the United States of Biafra who are being used by the Nigerian government, killer governors in the Southeast and South South, as well as those who are benefiting financially from the Nigerian government to distract, manipulate and destroy the Biafra struggle. But have no doubt, the crop of Biafrans in the forefront of this struggle today has systematically through due diligence investigation and information identified most of these saboteurs and their tactics, and we continuously be treated as enemy of the people. Finally, the intervention and actions of the African Human Rights Commission and other world bodies are needed urgently as we move towards the declaration of the independent state of Biafra on December 2nd, 2024 in Finland. On this note, I thank our leader, Onyendu Nam Dekanu, for your steadfastness, resilience, and your stand for peace, equity, and justice. Keep holding on. At this point, please permit me to call on our one and only in the 30th epitome of resilience, a man whom our leader, Onyendu, commanded, commanded their friends to go and follow and do what he says, because he is bringing a new dimension to this liberation process. The man that opened the eyes of Biafras and the world to the iniquities, sufferings, killings, danger, and systematic elimination process of indigenous by the Nigerian government and state. The man whom the Nigerian president, army, police, government, senators, House of Fred, and their cabals could not sleep when they remember him. The one whose name is like a thunderbolt to the ears of the oppressors and killers. The man whose enemies post on Twitter faceless, without any face. The man who has consistently exposed the ills and wickedness and killings of the Nigerian government to the international stage. And for the first time, the world became aware of the ills being perpetrated by the Nigerian government and their cronies on a whole new level. This guy has shaken Nigeria to its roots and nothing, absolutely nothing will stop him because he has the mandate of different people with him. We fully support his actions towards our liberation from a terrorist state. He has threaded where many failed and his wisdom and commitment to Biafra restoration sets him on the highest pedestal.